Good morning. Good morning. We have people in each section of the sanctuary. This hasn't happened in a long time. Welcome to the First Congregational Church of Oshkosh, whether you are here in the pews, whether you're watching live or recorded online or on local TV. We say here in this congregation and in churches around the United Church of Christ, no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, no matter how you're participating in this worship service, you are welcome here. Um, just a reminder, we do show announcements before the worship service and then also at the end. But I do have a few highlights and additions. Uh, first, just the flowers this morning on, um, is that the red Redible, Joanne? Yes. yes. Thank you, Thatcher. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a language, a, a word I've, I've learned since getting here. On the Redible, the flower arrangement this morning is in loving memory of Mariah Munch, given um, with promises of eternal remembrance from Mom, George, Olivia, and Eliza. Reminding us that life is both birth and death, we also have a red rose, celebrating the birth of the great-grandson of Marilyn Ward, Wyatt James West. And so um, get comfortable. This is a really eventful week, so I need to uh, just give you a few heads up here. First, today, after worship, we are holding an FCC 101. This is, um, uh, we are inviting all members and friends of the congregation to stay for this presentation. We'll have chance for questions, but this is just a a, a, an opportunity to take the overview of how the church works, how different parts relate to one another, how you can, um, whom to reach out to for what. And so uh, we will have, we have handouts. It's very exciting. Um, I don't think I've ever, I, I've not done very many handouts in my life, so I'm kind of excited about that. And um, this is an opportunity for us to be reminded or to learn for the first time how each and every one of us can be involved in and support the ministries of this congregation. I can't claim credit for those handouts I'm excited about. Um, th they are um, almost entirely thanks to the hard work of Kelly Green, our coordinator for Congregational Life. For those of you not able to stay this morning or those of you watching online, we will record um, FCC 101 and post it on our website. Second event this week, Ash Wednesday. The season of Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, and once again, our confirmation students and their faith partners have been planning uh, for this service, and they will lead us in a service um, that will include both communion and the imposition of ashes. The service will be Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, at 7 p.m., and we will be in Fellowship Hall. Third big event, special event, this week is next Sunday, sorry, ne next Saturday, March 5th, Saturday the 5th from 9 to 1. We will um, step into our next step in the appreciative inquiry process. We're holding a dream summit. And all of us, all of us are invited and encouraged to attend. This dream summit will have a chance to hear what the last two months of interviews have found out, have learned about um, how the Spirit works and moves through this congregation. And then we, as a group, as a body, as a congregation, will engage in the, the lovely and sometimes challenging task of discerning what it is that God is inviting us to do in the next few years and who it is that God is inviting us to be. So where, wh what they say, where I come from, y'all come. It is an important gathering and a chance to step into, in, envision and step into our future. And lastly, this is not, well, it is a special event. Um, as you probably um, know, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, changed their, updated their guidelines uh, for COVID-19 just this late this week. And FCC's COVID task force is meeting Tuesday afternoon to determine how to implement uh, those new guidelines here. The COVID news is very encouraging. 
after weeks and weeks and weeks of the Wisconsin Hospital Association reporting no ICU beds and no intermediate care beds immediately available in Fox Valley. As of yesterday, they were reporting eight ICU beds and four intermediate beds open. This is indeed good news. Uh, in addition, in Winnebago County, we've gone from a high in mid-January, six weeks ago, of over 600 new cases per 100,000 people down to a reported 23 new cases um, on Friday. Again, per 100,000 people. We will work as a task force to determine what is our best course forward, and we will share um, the, the updated protocols and guidelines by email and also on our website on Wednesday. <sighs> now. <laughs> Finally, we are ready to begin our worship service, and so I invite you to take a deep breath. Let whatever is weighing on your heart, let it be your offering to the Holy One who has called us here. Whatever lies ahead for you this day, let it wait, so that you and we all can be here can join one another in worship, praise, and prayer, and so that we can receive the gifts of grace that God has prepared for us. And so I'd invite Vanessa, no, you're doing peace candle. I will do the singing bowl. Um, let us allow the singing bowl to take us into a time of worship. pray. With prayers for peace in our hearts and peace and healing in our world, we light this candle. And now I invite you, if it's comfortable for you to do so, to rise where you are and share the signs and the words of peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And do not forget those who are watching us. Um, May the peace of Christ be with you, of course, as well. Now, if it's comfortable for you to do so, I invite you to stay um, standing as we sing our first hymn. If you'd like to look in your hymnal, it is hymn number 66, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. <laughs>
Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, we do bid you to be with us here as we gather, whether we are here in this place or we are connected online. Be our guide and guardian. Open our eyes to see the fullness of your light. Open our hearts to receive the fullness of your spirit. May it be you who guides all that we do in this time of worship and always. Amen. Please be seated. So I'd certainly hope that if we had children here this morning, they were gathered on the stairs, they would not be the only one who might say yes to, the, to answer this question. Are you afraid of the dark? The dark. Dark. <laughs> Where I come from, dark. Are you afraid of the dark? No. No. Well, I am. It, it's, it's sort of become a, a rule in our household that, that Shay occasionally likes to break, that it's just not okay to wait in a, a dark room and go boo. Because <laughs> it just really, really gets to me. But you know, why, again, you know, kind of imagine the kids are here with us. Um, why are some of us afraid of the dark? Aren't you all afraid of the dark at least a little bit? Are you, yeah, yeah, I got a few. So, how come? Keegan? You can't, you can't see. see. Vanessa? It's scary. It's scary. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> That's a darn good reason to be afraid of the dark, because it's scary. Well, this morning we have these fascinating, ancient, holy stories of, of, instead of darkness, bright light. We have a story of Moses. I mean, Moses has been communing with God over a long period of time, and, and more than once. And after this is after the golden calf. This is after Moses got mad about the golden calf and broke the first um, tablets with the, the, the first Ten Commandments. Moses has been back up on the mountain with God, and he has new tablets, ten new words, ten new commandments. And he's coming out from the mountain, out from the cloud. And there's some, of course, uh, uh, discussion, disagreement, exactly what the Hebrew words actually mean, but they've come to be understood as his face was Glowing, His face was radiant. His face was just lit up. One of the uh, ways of translating that, that, uh, that Hebrew word is that there were beams coming out of his face, beams of light. And guess what? The people of Israel, maybe they were afraid of their dark too, but this unsettled them. This made them uneasy. Let's face it, it scared them. The light frightened them. And in the version we hear this morning of the trans Jesus' transfiguration, the disciples, the three disciples, don't seem afraid. But in Matthew, Matthew's remembrance of that event, they are afraid because Jesus, as Jesus is on that mountain and uh, uh, talking with Elijah and Moses, his clothes, his visage, his self becomes dazzling white, bright, bright light. Why the uneasiness with this bright light? I'm, I, it makes more sense to me to be afraid of the dark. But they were afraid when Moses came out of the cloud and was just shining. 
maybe, just maybe, seeing Moses shine like that made people realize that their own light, their own beauty, their own relationship with God was muted, was, was covered up. And seeing Moses radiant, full of the glory of God shining forth, Maybe, just maybe, they realized that they were supposed to shine a little bit brighter, too. And like most of us, they might have realized, well, that might mean they need to change. They might need to make more room for God and less room for whatever it was that was taking them away from God, whether it was fear or greed, or just a lack of imagination. So they see Moses, and maybe, yes, they're afraid because he's glowing, as, as he's glowing, because it just is a reminder of how amazing God is, which can be a scary thing. But I do wonder if seeing him that radiant made those other people realize they needed to become radiant too and that that might mean some changes in their lives and so as we move toward the beginning of Lent which we start on Ash Wednesday let us have that question in our hearts are we shining as brightly as we're meant to. And if we're not, how come? What is it that we let distract us? What is it we let block us from being the people God created us to be? Now Moses was shining after spending 40 days and 40 nights with God. Maybe that's the invitation for us as we move into Lent this next week. Would you pray with me? Loving God, you shone through Moses. You shone so brightly in and through Jesus. And lo and behold, you call us to shine too. Help us, we pray. Help us make room for you so that on our outside, we too can glow with your love and your compassion and your delight in your creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear about Moses and about Jesus too. From the Hebrew Scriptures, a reading from Exodus chapter 34. Moses came down from Mount Sinai as he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. 
But when, whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with the Lord. And from the Christian scriptures, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9. Now about nine days after the sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure which he was about to accomplish to Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory, and the two men stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. And from the cloud, a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent. And in those days, no one told any of these things that they had seen. So ends this the reading and hearing of God's holy word. May we find blessing in it. Amen.
ask you, do you know of people who radiate? Are there people in your present or your past who simply glow? Certainly it's, it's a, a, a cultural thing to hear people describe a woman who is with child as glowing. And that's one way of glowing. But are there people in your life now who just seem to radiate? Not anger, not despair, but radiate love. Radiate the very presence of God. I hope there is. I hope there are a lot of them. I suspect that some of them are sitting here right now. I want to tell you a little bit about someone I know. I'll call him Steve. Steve, so I don't know, about I don't know, 15 years younger than I am. Small fellow. Something about him. Just kind of see him outdoors, see him inside. There's just something about him. Like he almost vibrated with grace. So what was different about him? Well, this fella I call Steve, he had had not an easy life. He was a drug addict. He, I think, had done jail time. And he had been saved in a very, very literal sense. He had encountered God in the risen Christ. He knew his Lord. He talked about his Lord. He ran, um, among other things, he ran a cleaning business. And although he was African-American, his, his uh, uh, business card had a drawing of a white woman. And so I was kidding him once. He's like, what's, what, what's with this? He said, well, if I put that card out around town, this was in Georgia, I would get far fewer calls to hire my cleaning service. And so that was another part of how life had been a challenge. For his business to succeed, he had to hide who he was at least a little bit. And yet, he still radiated love and compassion and joy. And so I think about that man I call Steve. This was someone who could come and visit my dad, my dad who had a compression fracture in his back. And, and was, was living with, with cancer that was, was spreading. And you know, my dad had some hard days. And whenever Steve would come visit him, my dad started to radiate and glow too. So I wonder, why are we afraid of the light? the fullness of the light of God. See, I don't think those Israelites and we are all that different. Different. I think if we saw Moses coming down from the mountain and he was shining, it would be unsettling to say the least. What's that about? What? Why? And I think it may be true of many of you. I certainly take a step back. If someone is on fire with the Lord, afraid they're going to try to convert me into a different kind of Christian, or if we just see the fullness of God in someone or something else, do we want to take a step back? And if we do, why? Well, as I said in the children's time, I think we may realize in seeing that person radiate with love and grace we may realize that we are called to do the same thing and we haven't exactly gotten there yet. I wonder if we're also afraid of that light in a similar way because the light of God is so bright 
and can shine so brightly through others. That light is so bright that it can illuminate all of who we are and how we live. And maybe, just maybe, you share with me the characteristic of not yet allowing God to shape everything about who I am and how I live. There may be these little pockets of, no, I want to just do my own thing over here. No, I'm not ready for you to bring healing in here yet. I want to stay angry and unforgiving. Or, no, I really don't want to look at how my life depends on systems that use and abuse others at the bottom. So maybe that light is scary, not only because we are meant to shine, but because to be able to shine, that light is showing us what we need to let go of. How we spend our time, how we spend our money, what we put our energy into dreaming about. They're all meant to be shaped by God. They're all meant to be rooted in the grace and love of God, not only for us, but for everybody. I don't know about you, but I think that's a tall order. And so that light comes. That light comes as it came through Moses with the ancient Israelites. It comes as it did in and through Jesus throughout his life, but especially we're hearing this morning on that mountain where he was transfigured. The light comes, and it's a challenge. The light comes, and it is meant to bathe us, wash us clean of those things that are in the way of being the people God calls us to be. So I know it's not yet Lent, but I'm getting ready. I think you can tell. <laughs> as we enter Lent on Ash Wednesday. Take a moment to not be afraid of the light. Take a moment and think about the fullness of your life. Be in touch with your heart and see where it is your heart is closed to other people, to yourself, to God and invite the light in. And since we're about to start, with, start the season of Lent, understand you only have to do this for 40 days. <laughs> Give it a try for 40 days and see what the Holy One might have in store for you, for me, and for all of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I know that you join me in holding the people of Ukraine, especially in your prayers. We hold those in prayer, too, whose names we know, Evelyn, George, Carol, Jen. So as we Share a time of silence with one another. I invite you to listen to the whispers of your heart as we are in prayer together. Holy mystery, source of love and light and life. We do begin with prayers of thanksgiving for the lengthening days, for your people of all faiths and no faith who live with grace, who live in love, and who work with you 
to bring about your vision of shalom for us all. We give you thanks for the beauty and bounty of this earth, for all those who have come before us, who've made our lives possible. We pray, O oh God, for all those who continue to be ill with COVID, with cancer, with other diseases of the body, mind, or spirit. We pray for and give thanks for all our doctors and nurses, first responders, those who work so hard to protect life. And Holy One, we ask that you hear our prayers for all those who will die today because of war in Ukraine and elsewhere. Grant them an end to the suffering of this world and eternal peace that is only found in you. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Russia, and all nations that war and bloodshed might cease and a new just peace can be forged out of this crisis. We ask you, O oh God, to grant wisdom to the leaders of nations, calling them to end provocation and invest instead in the things that make for peace. We pray that you will be those with those who are suffering because we cannot be with them. Protect them from devastation. Shield and comfort them as they confront the terror of violence that surrounds them. Hold them close to your heart and stay the hand of the enemies against them. And give us, O oh God, the courage and the strength to cry aloud against wickedness that dares to harm those, harm others who are made in your image. Let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, we pray. And hear our voices as we lift them in the words Jesus, the Prince of Peace, taught his disciples so long ago as we pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are indeed invited to be generous with our lives, our time, our talents, our treasure, and our dreams. And so I invite you, whether you are a regular giver, whether you give online, or if you are giving your pledge today, to also consider including in the offering plate this giving card as a reminder to yourself and a recommitment to God's work in the world. The morning's offering will now be received.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Bless these gifts, we pray. May they represent just the beginning of our journey to show forth your glory to the world. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 469. If you want to use your hymnal, it is I Am the Light of the World. Just a reminder that all are invited to stay for FCC 101 here in the sanctuary after worship. And now, beloved people of God, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the companionship of the unpredictable Holy Spirit be your companion now and forevermore. Amen.